Hello and welcome back to Maypole Farm. It is now mid-July and we have a lot more harvesting to crack on with today. We've still got three fields, two barley, one oat that we need to do and we need to start with some uh, slurry spreading on the fields that we've already harvested. But I did say last time out that we're going to be looking to get some new tractors and that we would be replacing the Massey very soon and very soon is today. Uh, we're going to replace it with another mat, another Massey. I do have one in mind. But first of all, I'm going to give it a little bit of a clean. Then we'll take it down the store and uh, we'll see if we can get trade in on it. I'll repair it. I'll redo the paint because I know my mate Comrade likes that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you down there. So we're down at the store. I've repaired it. We're just going to do the repaint. Five and a half grand. So hopefully it's going to add a <laughs> good old chunk of value. 17 grand lovely job so we'll get 17 grand for the drop nose and uh, let's have a look at what we're going to pick up so we're going to be going with the massey ferguson 5400 large frame gem one uh, this is by amg modern and bullet bill uh, i love this little massey i've got two of these running on my calmston save these keep calmston going very well uh, we're going for the uh, 5470 155 horsepower so it's 10 horsepower more than what we had on the drop nose uh, large tyres, 50th edition, don't think that adds anything extra that we need to do, so we don't worry about that. Standard roof, uh, we'll go beacon, work lights, I like to have the roof light on it. Narrow fenders is fine, mud guards, I do like a mud guard. Not worried about GPS, we'll go with the uh, three point PTO. We do want a front loader attacher on it, because it's going to replace the, the drop nose. We're going for the Saria Pro because we want to be able to do some of that field work while we're using it. Everything else is fine. We've got Mr. Farquhar number plate on it, and that's going to cost us 105 grand. So an extra 25 grand's worth of options. 10 grand of that is the sensors, but we're going to buy it. And to help cover the cost of these tractor replacements, because we're not making a lot of money at the minute, we're going to set our strawberries to sell. And we should get a little bit of money uh, in about 30 minutes time. So let's go have a little look at it. Absolutely love them. I think they're great, great little tractors. They'll keep the country going, I tell you. Right, let's jump, jump in. I've got a job for it straight away as well. It's not going to stay clean for long. Have a little look inside. Let's turn our lights on. I, I think this is one of the best... <laughs> For me, anyway, one of the best mods. I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. I'm glad I've got one on the series now. I think it's going to fit in really nicely here. I wanted one quite a while ago, but I've uh, had to buy bigger tractors to do other things. And now that we've got that little flexibility, I would like another big tractor. Maybe when we replace the John Deere, we'll get something a little bit bigger in the larger medium range i don't think we need to quite go into large tractors we may but the the john deere is 170 175 horsepower so we might look to to replace that with something more in the 200 range again that just gives us a little bit more flexibility with machinery and what the jobs the different tractors can do around the farm because we're starting to require more workers at, at once so uh, the more machines we have that can do things the better uh, it may even be a case as well but the new Holland, I like it. Absolutely love that tractor. That's another good one. But because I get the control conflict that makes it a little bit harder to use the cedars, without going into the, the actual mod and taking that out, I don't know another way of doing it, um, that may get replaced as well. We shall see. Now, I'll try not to spend too much time in cab, uh, because I'm not supposed to be in cab much on this series. It's just I've been doing the streaming, and I prefer to do the streaming in cab because I prefer to play in cab and I've just got in the habit of that but I promise I mean, this will be all in cab but the strange thing is though during the streams people said they liked watching in cab they liked it yet when you do the videos <laughs> it often seems that people want out of cab they want to be able to see things but different folks for different folks as you can see the, uh, we're going to be starting off with a little bit of fertilising on this and we're going to leave a worker to do it. We're going to set them up for course, get them out here, 
doing their thing. So if we just uh, give them three headlands, should be uh, plenty of... There we go. We've got loads of uh, manure, so they should be fine. I'll probably want to turn around. And they do sometimes have a little issue with that themselves, so we'll do that. If I put them there, they'll find the trigger first, and they want first waypoint. Off you go. But that is a beauty of step out of the way. Going to be a be a good day, right? We need to get the Rostel Mash over onto one of the barley fields. We had to cut through the farm because I've left it parked in the track. Cows are doing all right. They've got a few, few, <laughs> a few grams of feed left. As soon as we can get the corn and we can get that in a clamp, we can then start making the uh, maize silage and getting things going. So. Uh, Let's get this down to the farm. We'll get started on the harvest there. I'm probably going to put a worker on that and we'll do carton because there's a bit more carton. We've got further to go. So we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. We might find some other jobs to do as well. We've got lime spreading to do in our two new fields probably. We need to get some sensor readings on that. So uh, yeah, let's we'll see what we can get done. Take two for setting off the Rosa. <laughs> I forgot to set it to first, went to nearest and it shot off over there. But we're going to leave them to it. They'll go around the edge. Let's head back, get ourselves a uh, tractor with a car on the back, I think. Let's go. And the new Holland is already uh, set up on our TR-190. So I'm even wondering whether we should try and get a bigger grain trailer. We've, we've got the Fiat. If we can start making some good money, we'll, we'll replace the Fiat as well. We've had fun with it, but maybe something bigger for when we do our large sales, should large sales ever come. That would be handy. Cows are looking good, they're happy. Our corn is coming along nicely. Look at that, that's looking good. That's our corn in there. Again, that one on the right, that's going to be for feed. That's gone straight down to the grist mill. And that lot is going to be for silage. So we could we could even go in there and, and do that green, I think. But I'm not sure we're going to have enough time. So hopefully it'll still let us silage it when it's grown and, and, and not uh, affect the, uh, the output. The yield, as I like to say. Don't have to worry about too much for traffic because I turned it off because they kept having a crash in the corner here, especially now that we're coming out of that field. Got a lovely field of wheat there. As I was walking back, I was like, oh, it's a lo lovely pale field of wheat. Got a bit excited at that. Nothing wrong with our barley. I was, I was just caught off by how, how sort of quite pale it was. Now, do I race around or? Should we wait for it to come back into Ross? Do you think it'll get a full headland in before it needs to unload? Stay tuned to find out. Turns out no, they couldn't go all the way around, so we'll go give them an unload. And as you can see, you may have already noticed, uh, finances are now back up to uh, 300,000. 300, so, uh, I'm not quite sure what the uh, the John Deere is worth for us as to how much we'd make off it. Not a lot, we've had it a while. Oh dear. Should have gone round. Never mind, we have to cut in on our barley, I think. Felt sure I was going to creep under them branches. If I was in cab, I'd have seen that coming. Right, got to try and turn around now definitely should have gone the other way around. Now I have had a look already. I, I do have in mind what I'd like to replace the John Deere with. There's there's a few that I'm umming and are over. I'm an, I'm an, an R and over. And they're going to cost around the 200 grand mark. Now we still need to save money or make sure we've got enough money uh, for potato harvest and equipment. Don't know why I'm clapping my hands. Sorry about that. <laughs> Get excited. Um, so yeah, 
I might wait to replace the John Deere um, a little bit later in the year once we've done a few things once we've maybe sold some extra crop we might have we've got a lot of honey sitting there waiting to be sold and we do have a one and a half pallets of eggs I think or at least one and a bit pallets of eggs so we've got money sitting on the farm in that sense and as soon as we can get some feed into our cows we've got the milk money coming in we've that's trickling at the minute it's trickling through they're not happy that they're just being fed hay and chopped beet they need some silage i could be pumping silage in but i think we'll wait until we can get a nice tmr mix for them so uh, yeah i'm going to leave the uh, the worker to go around because we've got other jobs to do so we're going to head over to the farm jump in the john deere and uh, crack on with a few other things and that first thing is going to be getting some lime on our fields. Actually, before I do that, lessons should be learned from previous outings. Let's go and check to make sure we need some... Oh, we need to uh, do this anyway. So we'll purchase them. And then we shall check. So it will take a bit of lime. We can do that. Everything could probably do with a little bit of lime. Definitely going to need fur on them. Okay. Perfect. So we'll get over there. Get some lime. Hopefully, uh, things will fill this time. Well, things are opening, so that's a good start. Also, other than that field, that meadow, sorry, our grass is ready to go again. So that could be a thing as well very soon might cut the grass tomorrow depends on how the harvests go now this should be all right line start beautiful let's go it's not going to require a lot but it's going to require some that's the one i want and we should get a little signal to let us know when our harvest has done a full full lap and uh, try and get back over. We'll try and get both these fields done, though. They're, they're, they're only tiny. They shouldn't take very long at all. As you can see, our new mass is doing a great job with the slurry. No worries with that one. Managed to get all the straw. All the straw went in for bedding. I always forget how wide this is. We can change that width because you know it's quite wide, but we're on we're on quite a tight schedule with wanting to unload the uh, the harvester as well. So being able to get through these two fields nice and quick is definitely a benefit. Lovely vista. I do like this map. I tell you what, I do like this map. I've spent so many hours on here now, and I still absolutely love it. I've, at no point have I ever felt bored on Maybell. I felt frustrated with myself <laughs> for making it harder for myself, and the challenge I've put myself in for it, but I'm not really enjoying it. I haven't had uh, a massive look at Cavalier's new map, uh, Ebony. I had a little look while it was in but being, being created while he was making it he's kind enough to uh, allow me into his uh, mod testing group and to have a little look and a play around on him and I had a little bit of time on there and uh, from what I saw it was it was great there's a lot of stuff I'd like to try and do again I'd like to get back to uh, more map tours I quite like doing them uh, when the maps are original we had so many maps come in that were ju I think I've said this before, just like carbon copies of each other not that people were ripping each other off or copying each other, but everything was that survival, empty land, start from scratch type thing going on. Or we had conversions coming over that we'd already seen from previous games. And so we starting to see a few more originals coming in. So I might start to do those. Oh, look, I did it in the dark. I've missed some straw. Never mind. That'll, that'll stay out there. That'll get churned in. 
So yeah, we might we might start doing some more map tours if we get some more maps in because I, I know other, obviously other channels that focus more on doing the mods and doing the maps, they'll do every map they come across. They'll do all the mods they come across. I, that's not me. I just want to show <laughs> what I like. Oh, if something catches my eye, not necessarily everything that I like, but something catches my eye. Like there's some maps that we've already looked at that I'd love to do some work on. Just because they, they intrigued me. I think that should be enough. And I've said already that I've, I've got a little project that I've been working on behind the scenes for, well, since Shire Farm started. I started both of them at the same time. And it's just ticking over and I'm, I'm getting on my schedule. Because it's very different from anything else that I've done farm wise, but it is farming. It's not me trying to force another new game on you. It is uh, farm sim, and I just tried to do something different with it. And uh, yeah, just because of the way my schedule is, or, or was, I knew I'd need to get ahead, so uh, that's ticking over. So I have got something else, something original, certainly original for me, coming. And in time, I would like the harvester is definitely full now, because it's course play, it's not telling us. Um, yeah, I would like to get back to. Um, America and the sort of role play series so that was, that's fun to do again it's something that's very different from what I normally do so getting back to that would be pretty cool now I think these needed ploughing we'll check that as well if they do need ploughing I need to put a worker on it need turning over anyway to get the stones out so uh, we may do that they might get ploughed up today but let's get back to our harvester and uh, make sure that's going now while this is unloading I'm just gonna chip oh don't run off mate it's supposed to stop for me come on how couldn't it be last time you stopped and this time you're gonna drive off Do me dirty like that, mate. Do me dirty. Well, he's going to follow along the bit where he's already been. Let's see if I can get him to unload. Oh, I was going to say we're going to go check on some things, but we'll try and get this unload in. Then I need to check whether I'm sticking this in the grist or whether this is going in the sil in the silo. Probably in the silo. Because we did stick some in the grist before, didn't we? Did put quite a bit in there. I will check. Sort of getting away from him now, and I. Yeah, they're set to stop front loads. They stopped front loads last time. It's going to stop now. That was a strange one, wasn't it? All right. Let's get out of your way so you can turn. Miscommunication there, sir. Miscommunication. I think they're doing two headlands and then going working across the field. Anyway, we want to go back down to our productions. Gonna put our strawberries back to uh or oh, not deactivate it, do I? Um Storing. There we go. We want that. And we want to get down to our grist mill. So we have. Oh no, we can put this in. We'll put all this in. I think we're going to need another, another wheat field as well. Did I say that beforehand? We've got oats coming in. We'll put the barley in. Hopefully, we can get a field of barley, a field of oats, a field of wheat. We've got the canola. There wasn't that much canola, was it? It was a little bit disappointing. Harvest on the canola, to be fair. It was only like 60,000 litres, weren't there, off that big field. Whether the yield was really bad on it, and I don't know why that would be. Perhaps it needs turning over. We've done quite a few on it. I've sort of reset it, so it, it may be in a state that it needs ploughing. But that wasn't a great yield. Maybe we should uh, plough up all of our fields after the big reset for the whatever many time it was. 
Also, I've found what it is that's under my map here. I had a little look. And I need to go in and uh, <laughs> take that out in the XMLs. I know what it is. I found it. I don't know how it got there. But I know what it is. And I think I know how to get rid of it. <laughs> it's whether I think to do it before I start again. It's the same with Shire Farm. We've got that rock there. I know how to get rid of it. I keep forgetting. We've got the, the flute and black mist in the middle of a field. I know how to get rid of it. I forget about it. It doesn't do us any harm, so it's, it's not a big thing. Right. What I'm going to do, because I don't want this to be too long of an episode, I'm going to let this field do its thing. And uh, I'll come back when this one is finished. And we're ready to move on to the next one. Because the next field... I'll try and do it so I harvest, so we get a little bit of harvest in here as well. But if not, it's just going to be waiting around for me to do this, because I don't want to keep interrupting a worker. I might go and plough a field. Who knows? So we've unloaded the harvester again, so hopefully that buys a bit of time. The fields don't need ploughing up, but I do need to dig, turn them over. So we're going to get him, oh, try and cultivate with this uh, little old harrow. We haven't had this out in a long time, this cultivator. Not in a long time. So it's sort of make, make a change, something we haven't done in a while. I did contemplate selling this harrow quite some time ago. I thought, well, if we do decide we're going to do some cultivating, I don't want to have to buy another one. Although we could afford to get something a bit bigger, a bit fancier. I do like having the old chain arrows. And we just want to turn it over to get some stones. Although, I can't see stones now. So, perhaps the stones are in the other one. But I swear these fields had stones in them before I limed them. I'm not lying, they did. Now, because I'm jumping between jobs again, this episode, we probably won't get much in the way of a time lapse. It'll be a bit of this and a bit of that, and I know some people don't like them sort of episodes. But when you've got a lot of jobs going on, um, you just have to do it. And I, I can easily set a worker to do this, a worker to do that, and work to do that, but I've got to show some of it. So if I do this one, then I can have a worker doing the other one while I do something different because we've got a lot of bots of land on the go and if anyone can remember from early on I never used to be someone that used workers at all, I used to try and do everything myself because as a rule I'd, I've always sort of run a small farm that's how I do it, that's how I like to play it a couple of meadows, a couple of arable and it's stuff that I can tick over all on my own and then fill in my winters with contracts. But you need to see a little bit more than that when, I think anyway, when, when doing a series. If, if we just kept the same four or five fields, we'd never do anything different. There's stones in the other field, and I can see them, yeah. It's got a few on the edge of this one. If we get this turned over, then we can have some slurry spreading on it later. And the, the Massey will be busy for the for the whole of probably July, start of August, that Massey's going to be out slurry spreading. I say tomorrow we're going to start the grass. I won't start the grass today because there's probably another one that's going to be too much to uh, to manage all at once. Although we have got the swaffer, so I could have, I'm going to put the swaffer up in the big field again, the new, the new meadow. Uh, I want to call it 50 something up the other side of the farm and I'm going to do that all as fresh grass and that can then all go straight into the animal feed and all the meadows around the farm I think they were, supposed, they were going to be hay so our massive meadow our medium meadow and our more recently extended meadow that was the sheep pasture that will all be hayed up 
do. Well, we're not going to have anywhere to put more silage unless we do silage bales. We do need the roughage. Maybe we'll do one of the silage bales just to be different. Remind me of that when I get round to it, someone. <laughs> I've been managing my grain unloads a bit better here than I have been recently on Shire Farm. We've got another 20,000 put in the grist mill. That's about 140,000 litres of barley in the grist mill. 104 or 106 of uh, wheat. We'll probably get around about 40, maybe 60,000 litres of oats off the oat field later. I'm not certain on that. And I'm not really certain on how much grain grist we need anyway. I could be filling that up and we only need like a few thousand litres per load. So you never know. But I'm sure once it's full, if we don't need it all, or we don't, then we just don't need to keep pumping it and filling it up. We'll just have a nice supply and then next harvest we'll have some things to sell. Which would be nice. So if I remember rightly, these two fields we're going to get soybeans in for chickens I believe it was the one the the har the field that we're harvesting get your words out fat boy the fields that we're harvesting uh, the the barley one we're in now that one I'm gonna put wheat in because we've got the extra barley this time around the the other barley field just below at this opposite the grist mill that's gonna have potatoes put in the oat fields. I might put oats if I can in our potato field over there once we've harvested that because it's a little bit bigger so that'll allow us a little bit more oats next time around so then where the oats are we will have barley if that makes sense to people so we've even got a little bit of crop rotation going on just for quantity's sake and since we've got like what half a million litres, if not more, of um, cut beet, and we've got another, and that was just off doing like headlands off that beet field. Hopefully, this time around, we're going to be a lot more efficient with the beet. I may even slow time down for the beets because it's just so time consuming. We may go to like times six instead of times ten. I don't like fiddling with the time, but sometimes you have to get these jobs done. so we can uh, concentrate a little bit more now on the harvest I am going to stick a worker in this one so we leave them to it as we run up the field we'll check in we'll see how far the masses got I think they're doing a good job saw them way up at the top earlier on absolutely smashing it yeah they're nearly finished they are absolutely smashing it, although it is now 3 o'clock. All these workers, look, we're down to uh, 290. We've spent 3 grand on workers and whatever else is costing us money at the minute. <laughs> workers. So we'll try and follow them down for an unload since they like to uh, just drive off on me anyway. I did park at the end of a row when I left this and uh, they did did empty into it at 33% so that worked just to try and save me some time try to put it in a position where I thought they might unload it's nice when you can get this going I mean obviously it's easy to do this if you just use cruise control but fiddling about with cruise control I'm starting to leave the cruise control set at numbers that work with our a real speed mod so we can go a little bit quicker without being unrealistic and getting jobs done but we've not used that for anything today what have you got for me sir anything oh you're just doing that little tip 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 thing well since we've not got enough space for a full unload we'll go and put this in the grist mill the next lot of barley the other barley field I'm going to put in storage and uh, we may sell that once, once we get a hold or a grasp of what, we've, what we're doing with the grist mill and how much that takes and how far that goes, 
we'll know what we can do. It's, that's got to be better than being in the position where we've been in and not having enough and not knowing what's going to happen and how we're going to feed. Obviously, I don't think we can feed our cows straight up grist, but <laughs> it's there as the, the mineral feed part. That is the idea. So in fairness, we, we are making a couple of hundred thousand litres of mineral feed. That's what we're making. So yeah, this is a small part of the feed. Probably, we'll look at it, probably less than 10% of the feed mix up. Who knows? Someone knows. Someone who actually knows about Maze Plus more than me knows. Just doing a couple of hours <laughs> every so many days isn't the best way to try and learn this stuff. Really isn't. We need to do some maintenance on the uh, New Holland. What's the New Holland worth? Because I think we brought this second. Oh, we're catching that. We're going to break our trailer. Different angle next time. Yeah, I want to see what it's worth. Different, different menu. Because if I am gonna, it's still worth seventy grand. I feel sure we brought that, brought that second hand. So yeah, oh yeah, sixty grand. That's probably like a two hundred, nearly three hundred thousand pound tractor, isn't it? What horsepower? Three hundred. So if we replace it, we want it to suffer this three hundred or more. I like it. It's just the fact that it's got that control clash for using uh, for using certain equipment, being limited to just the one tractor for the seeding and the planting. If we ever have seeding and planting going on together, we won't be able to run two of them. Right, let's go back, get this unload, and then uh, we'll move on to the next field. And uh, like I said, I'll try and get that one done or myself. So the last of the barley has been put into the grist mill. I have brought over the fear in an attempt to try and have to do uh, less runs for unloads. I'll fill both of them up before we uh, unload. The Massey has finished the uh, slurry spreading on the big canola field. It's even finished on one of the small uh, grain fields. I've moved it over to the other because the cultivating is finished on there as well. Everyone's busy. And I've even managed to get a worker on the bales. So we are all go. Everyone's settled in. So I think we might be able to have a little time lapse. nearly finished on the harvest and as you can tell it's getting on uh, we've, we've run out of daylight now it's just gone eight o'clock 20 past eight but we'll get this one done we'll get it all unloaded get it put into the silo I'm gonna leave the harvester here I'm gonna trust that no one's gonna nick it I'm gonna leave the harvester in the field and then first thing tomorrow morning we'll get this harvester set up in the oats and uh, then we'll look to uh, sort out our grass boys, get them going. Let's turn around. I should imagine we're going to have to have a little snag on the end as well. It's been a nice little harvest, nice and chilled bit of time. Had some music on and uh, had a few notifications for some guys going live while I was doing it. So, uh, been watching uh, Big Sid Gaming on Twitch. 
he's a member of our Discord. Go check him out, Big Sid Gaming. He's on Twitch. He's on uh, YouTube as well, I believe. Put some uh, content out, Facebook Gaming. He does the lot. And uh, my old friend, Mr. Teeble, he's been a bit quiet lately. He's had uh, some real life things going on. But he's been streaming some Warzone on Twitch, so drop him, give him a bit of a lurk. It helps the algorithms. I can't always be active in the chat, and I'm not always listening because I'm recording. But I'll, uh, I'll always lurk for those that are, that are doing their thing as well. So yeah, go check those guys out. Big Sid Gaming, Mr. Teeble. Give him a give him a hello. Tell him I said sent you over. Yeah, we we'll get this in. We've obviously filled up the, uh, the trailer on the back of the uh, New Holland. That is done. Let's fold this away. Let's turn that off. Park it up by the uh, the entrance. Although there is a entrance over there as well. Got some lights on the Fiat. Not sure where the New Holland is. It's over there somewhere. But that's why we're <laughs> going to park this up. Turn it off. Like I say, we'll leave it overnight. That'll be fine. We'll just move it in the morning. And I'm going to try and get the... Uh, turn the lights on. See where we're going. Probably put some wide lights on, put some back lights on. No one's about. No one will get hurt by it all. We'll try and set the feet up to follow us down. And then we'll take control for the tip. I'd say this lot's going to go into uh, our silo. And all should be well. You can do it from in. I know you can. I just always forget the controls. We're going to move a bit closer so they keep up. Yeah, that's it. We're on my ass, mate. Because you do tend to get lost sometimes. Go out the other one. We could have gone out that bottom one, but I more likely it's he's more likely to get snagged than me then. It's been a it's been quite a long day. We, we started early, didn't we? I think we started around about well, I started about six o'clock. It's now nine. But that's what we do when it's harvest. It's a good job we've got that extra day as well to come to get the oat in. If not, we would have been pulling an all night just to get the oats. I can hear him coming. Beautiful. Such such a time saver when it works right. And again, I'm probably the only person that ever has issues with it because I don't use a lot of these mods that often, so I do tend to make mistakes when setting things up. Like I say, we will try and remember to uh, set up a, a follow me with a with the trailer to. Uh, to do the beets and, and the potatoes that's got to be easier than what we did before I think my baler is finished as well they've done the inside I moved them over to the outside they got that done uh, both of the little fields have been slurry spread along with the larger canola field there are only tiny stones in that second field and now that I've slurry spread it I'm not sure if we'll even be able to get them out so they might stay in for another one because we know eventually I'm going to merge them together because they're only tiny but I thought we'd do at least one harvest with them being little and then we'll uh, we'll merge them afterwards so that would make sense if I if I leave them little stones in there for this soybean harvest uh, we'll get that out afterwards and then we'll uh, merge the two fields we'll plough the whole lot up together and uh, reset that as one big field or one, one that's a small field still isn't it? one small field and that can then just be uh, recycling through a bit of wheat, a bit of soybean, whatever. And uh, help them out on feeding the animals. So let's get this in here. There we come. See if he bumped me off. Oh no, stopped to a good distance. Thank you very much, sir. There we are. So if I edge forward, hopefully uh, it'll come on. Now, I don't anticipate that they uh, they know to uh, unload, but we'll jump in. We'll do that. He can leave. 
and we'll pour that in. And afterwards we'll check our quantities. I'm going to just turn this engine off while that's doing its thing. And for the oats, I'll do the same thing. I want to take both of them out for the oats. Sorted. Yeah, I'll take both of them out when we do the oat harvest, so then I can bring them back in a similar fashion. And uh, I think the whole oat harvest will fit in both of these. Anyway, what do we have in storage? Just check our amounts. So we've got 31,000 litres of wheat, 112,000 litres of barley, and there is a good chance that that's all going to go for sale uh, whenever the good time for that is. Probably, yeah, December. So we have to try and remember that. Uh, oats we're getting in, the canola was just 60,000, now we're keeping that. Are we keeping it? We should keep it, yeah, just in case. Only a little bit of corn. But that is it, that is another day done here in Maypole. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it, we've got a lot done. Hopefully it'll come across alright in editing. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, give it a big fat thumbs up down below. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn your bell notification on, find out when new videos are going live. As always, comments and feedback down there. Let me know what you think. Do you like the massive replacement? I know we've not seen much of it. Hopefully we can see a bit more of it in the coming episodes. Come and join the Discord. There's a link down there. Lots going on. You guys have a wonderful day. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.